The research we've done behind this advert has been looking at real people in real crashes, often who've died. And we're looking at those with and without seat belts in identical crashes or as close as we can get to see why it is those with seat belts survive more often than those without. And we're seeing that they're twice as likely, if not more, to survive a crash with a seat belt than without. And it's simply down to the fairly fundamental physics of how a seat belt's going to work. It's going to couple you to the vehicle. So when you're having a crash, and the vehicle is deforming and managing the energy of that really violent event, you're benefited by the seatbelt. It's connecting you to the vehicle. It's allowing you to change velocity over a much greater times and distances than without the seatbelt. And what that means is the forces that happen to you as a human being, as a driver, as a passenger in a car, are far less than they would be if you weren't seatbelted. Seatbelts do two really important things. They connect you to the vehicle, which keeps you in the vehicle, stops you leaving the vehicle, crashing into the tree or the roadside where the car then could roll over you or another vehicle could run into you. Just really fundamental things. You keep in the vehicle, you're going to be much more protected than if you leave it. If you're in the vehicle and you're seat belted, the contacts that you make within the inside of the vehicle are going to be far less severe than if you're unbelted. If the vehicle stops, then you hit the inside of the vehicle. It's going to hurt far more if you weren't seat belted than if you were and then you have a similar velocity, you're travelling at the same sorts of speeds as the vehicle. So when you're impacting with it, the severity of the forces involved is that much less, meaning that you're going to walk away, hopefully, relatively uninjured, compared to somebody who hasn't been wearing a seatbelt. The Transport Research Laboratory and many others have been researching seatbelts and how effective they can be for many years. We've also been considering, though, why it is some people don't always use a seatbelt. And there's many excuses often given as to why that might be. What we discovered though was that there was a real perception out there that on common journeys, perhaps just going to the shops, perhaps just going to get the cigarettes or collect the shopping or collect the children from school, seatbelts weren't really needed because it was a familiar route and it was safe and so on. What we find though from the crash data, when you look at where people are most at risk, they're the journeys. It's these common journeys at relatively low speeds where people often have crashes. And of course, because there's lots of crashes happening there, that's why we're seeing lots of the injuries. And seatbelts do work at these low speeds. Seatbelts are important wherever you are in the vehicle. Drivers, front passengers, and especially rear passengers. When you get into the back of the vehicle, many people perceive it to be a safe environment. It's like a sofa. They're sat there, it's safe, they're protected by this box around them. It's how a lot of people genuinely feel. Unfortunately, if you were to crash, that just isn't true. The car's still stopping in less than a blink of an eye and you're then going forward and hitting either another occupant in that vehicle or part of the structure, or worse, you're leaving the vehicle itself. Seat belts work just as well in the rear and are just as important as they are in the front of a car or a similar vehicle. A really important point to remember is that although your car is fitted with an airbag, that airbag is effectively a supplementary restraint. It's designed to work with the seat belt. It isn't designed to work on its own. If you're not wearing a seat belt, it will offer perhaps some protection in some crash types, but nothing like the levels you're going to need to prevent serious or life-threatening injury. Airbags work with the seat belt. They stop the head for a driver smacking into the steering wheel, literally. They cushion that part of the crash phase in a frontal impact. They do not work well with the whole body going into the airbag, as we've seen in the crash test videos. As researchers, we break the crash down into three stages. The car has an impact. You, or the driver or the passenger, has a crash within the vehicle. Either wearing a seat belt, so you're coupled to the vehicle, but you're still having the vehicle and the seat belt transposing forces onto the body. Or without the seat belt, the vehicle comes to a stop and the second impact is later on and you're literally smacking or colliding in the interior of the vehicle. The third stage is more subtle and what most people don't think about. It's where that if you are seat belted, it's that although the seat belt is stopping your skeletal structure moving forward, your internal organs are still wanting to move forwards, but they're moving forward at a rate that is more manageable than if you're not seat belted. If you're not seat belted, you're having the impact, then the organs are all rushing forward very violently, often causing huge injuries. A very common excuse we heard from people who didn't wear seat belts in our research was that the seat belt itself to wear was uncomfortable. On a modern vehicle, and in fact even on some vehicles perhaps 10 years old now, seat belts have been adjustable and seats are adjustable. That can be done and if you try and experiment in different positions, you can still have either a good driving position or a good sitting position as a passenger and have a much more comfortable seat belt. And if it really is uncomfortable or it's nagging, that in my view is far better than spending weeks in hospital or perhaps even worse as a result of not wearing a seat belt.